Welcome to The Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are The The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. Welcome to show number 99 of The Traveling Professors. Today, Sherry and I are going to take you on a walking tour of the Acropolis. Now, Sherry and I have been to the Acropolis on three different occasions, so we know how to get up there the correct way. However, the first time we went up, we went the absolute worst way you could go. So this will be a lesson in how to get up there without killing yourself. So besides our usual history lesson, we'll also have some family history as well and lots of tips on what you can do and how you can view the Acropolis. Now here's a map that illustrates ancient Athens, its growth. So the area in the center, that would have been Athens before the end of the Persian War. During the Golden Age, the reconstruction of Athens and the Parthenon and the expansion of Athens, you have the red area. So it goes from the center to spread out. And then Emperor Hadrian just loved Athens and he's really responsible for doing a lot of upkeep to the city. And so there's the addition added on by Hadrian. When we went to visit, we visited the first time in 2012. We're taking a cruise of the Eastern Mediterranean. So we're coming into Athens. Athens, and we're going to stay for three days. This happened to be the year in which the Greeks had three elections for parliament. Two of them were deadlocked, and they're going for their third, which will finally put in a government. And we arrived the Friday before the election on Sunday. So, I mean, there's all sorts of political stuff going on. Now, here's a rather poor map of Athens. We'll improve that later on. The reason we have the Intercontinental Hotel is because that's where we stayed in Athens. One of the things that we did is as soon as we got into our hotel room early in the morning. We got the shuttle and you see the black line which is the shuttle. It normally goes down to Stygima Square and then drops people off. It's where they pick up buses from the airport and what have you. But they will stop to let you go to the Acropolis. This dotted line that you see here that is their suggested route to go and visit the Acropolis. That's not what we did. But as you can see, there's the Acropolis. There's the Agora which is the main marketplace. There's a giant park over over here, which also has the prison for Athenian criminals, and that's the spot where they kept Socrates before they executed him. Here is the Intercontinental Hotel that we stayed at, and I picked a room specifically because of its view. And here is the view out of our window. You can see the Acropolis And I only took probably 40 different pictures of this at different times of the day, sunrise, sunset, you name it. What I didn't realize was I knew Sherry had always wanted to go to Greece. We both always wanted to go to Greece. And my oldest daughter and her husband are with us as well. And so I wanted to surprise her. So I opened the curtain and I showed her and she could see the Acropolis. And she started to cry. She didn't think that she would ever get to see this. So that's going to change some of my thinking as we go along, as you'll see. Now here is a really nice reconstruction of the whole area, but we have to be a little bit careful here because this would be at the height of Athens and Roman time. Now what you would have had at the time of Pericles and before the Persian Wars, you would have had the stadium here, you would have had the amphitheater of Dionysius, you would have had the Asclepion and a couple of other temples up in this area. Then you would have all of the buildings that you would see up here. Now the Parthenon would was not originally here. A smaller version of it was over on one side. And then this was built during the age of Pericles. And then this is the Erythectium. And so you would come up, go up the main steps, through the Propylae, and then you're, you're up here on top. Now the other theater down here, this one, Atticus's theater, that was built in Roman times. Most of this gigantic stoa here was also built in Roman times. So what we're really looking at is just what's up here. Now from an aerial view, you can see what we have to look at. If you're going, well, I wonder what happened to the roof. Well, the roof of the Parthenon is pretty easy to explain. During the Turkish Wars in 1667, I believe, a gunpowder was stored in it, and the Venetian artillery hit it and blew the roof off of it, knocked the friezes off, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But otherwise, it was in pretty good condition at that particular time. To go all the way up to the top here, okay, it's 490 feet from 
sea level at Piraeus. So it's probably 200, 225 feet or so to go from the ground level up to the top of the Acropolis. And that whole area up on top is about 7.4 acres. Now, there have been people living in this area for thousands of years. They have found Neolithic artifacts. They've certainly found Mycenaean palace ruins, the small ones. Originally, at that same time of the Mycenaeans, which was about 1300 BCE, they built a Cyclopean wall that you would, the same type that you would have found at Tiryns or Mycenae or some of the other places. They built a wall around this thing that was 760 meters, 10 meters high, and anywhere from three and a half to six meters in thickness. That was the main defense of the city until after the Persian War. There's also in 1300 BCE a an earthquake that split part of the Acropolis and put a 35 meter fissure not far from where the Erythectium was located. It then hit a spring. And so the ancients built steps basically from the area around the Erythectium down to the spring so they could have access to water. The Acropolis Museum has a nice set of these models of the different stages of the Acropolis. So here is the one from the 12-1300 BCE with the Cyclopean walls and you can see where the spring was located in a probable palace area. Now this one is from 480 BCE. This one is what the Acropolis looked like just before the Persians attacked during the Second Persian War. So you have Temple of Athena over here and then they're in the process of building the larger temple which will become the Parthenon. There's no Erechtheum here. It would have been this particular location. And you see, it does have some walls, not a, not a whole lot. They actually had a stockade around part of it. Of course, this is all burned and destroyed for the most part by the Persians. And then here we have the reconstruction of the area after the Persian Wars. This would be the Periclean reconstruction. And of course, you see the beautiful Parthenon. And you see the Erythectium over here. Temple of Athena Nike, another small temple. Of course, the main entrance is still way up here. And you notice that here's the Asclepian Temple, where you go to get healing. You still have the old cave over here. And then here is the Dionysian Theater. And this is an Odeon over here for meetings. Now it's Athens in the second century AD. So the Romans have, have come in at this point. And you see the expansion of the city of Athens. You know, it used to be just in this little area around the Acropolis. And if you look at just the Acropolis, you see the initial changes. First of all, they expanded, they expanded the Dionysian theater. And you notice what the Romans added. They added a stage because the Romans like to use props. They've also used this for gladiating. Not exactly something the Athenians really appreciated. Again, there's an Odeon, which can be a place where you have other types of performances, but it's usually where the, the city officials speak. And then you see the addition of the gigantic stoa, which would have been a place for people to gather. It would have had shops. This is the entrance into the, the Atticus Theater. Was Acropolis is pretty much the same as it was after Pericles had constructed it. And then here's the area in 1500 AD. The Dionysian Theater is gone. The Odeon is gone. There's just a wall where the Stoa would have been. The roof and everything is gone off of the, this theater over here. We still have a roof on the Parthenon. The Erythectium is still there. And the area where, where you have the entrance, the Propylae, has been vastly increased in defensive capabilities by these towers. And what you see here, what Athens looked like in 1860, it's microscopic. Look, you just have people living around the base of the Acropolis. This is the Temple of Zeus over here. This is just basically nothing between here and Piraeus. When we get up on the top of the Acropolis and take a view of the city, every square inch in this picture is populated with building after building after building going up all of these mountains in this area. Choosing your route to the Acropolis. Now there used to be three ways to come up to the Acropolis. One was up here at the Agora. You can buy a ticket up here and the tickets are actually good no matter where you buy your ticket. It's good for two days. But you used to be able to, years ago, uh, go right through the Agora and then 
then come on up and enter the Acropolis. Now that's what would have happened in ancient times. This is the Panhellenic way. This is where all the ceremonies and things would take up, take place, and they would come up this direction. Uh, gradually sloping, but it is it is a pretty good elevated walk. The last time we were there and went to the Agora, we tried it, and the chain link fence, fence is right about here, and you couldn't get through. So you had to go back down and then come around. The way we did it is we came in right here on this corner. There is the metro stop here from Athens Metro. One of the things that took place is we arrived, this is in, in June, and we arrived early in the morning right off the plane, decided to go up here, and they tell you make sure you have water. Well, we come in right here, we buy our ticket, and we couldn't find any place to buy water. It was off to our left in these almost invisible vending machines, and so we had some water with us. So we end up going to the Theater of Dionysus. And then we climb a little higher to the next level. We go by the Asclepion, some of the other temple areas. We stopped in this area to get some water. And then we gradually worked higher and higher and higher. Got a nice view of that theater. And then went and climbed up in the Propylae. And we made it to the Acropolis. Where I nearly killed everybody in the process. Well, a couple of years later, when Sherry and I came back for our, our long journey of Greece, we wanted, I wanted to go and take pictures of the prison where Socrates was kept. So we come up this road here, turn off into the park area, and bingo, there it is. But when we went back, we realized there's a road right up here to the Acropolis. So we walked that way, could have gone right in, and it's a gradual slope going up and it gets a little steeper as you get closer but it's really the easiest route this is this is the really a good way to go and then if you want to see all the other temples on the other side you can go back down going down is a lot easier here we are taking a look at the acropolis as we're ready to enter we go over there's the little ticket office purchased our ticket there and then we walked in and couldn't find the water as i said before it was just off to the left. We found it on the way back. So here is our view as we're starting to walk up towards the Acropolis. So here we are getting a nice look at the cave. We're heading right to the Theater of Dionysius. And in the one map that I showed you here, it is right here in its completion. Well, it's been restored a little bit. They keep doing a little bit more. So here you come in, you have the nice half moon shaped area. There's a stage area and you have the seating. At one time, you could have put 15 to 16,000 people here. It was literally all up the slope. Uh, it was built out of wood from the 6th century BCE until about 333 BCE, at which point it was rotting and they replaced it with stone. And here we are right in the middle of it, looking out into the, the center, view off to the sides. And then you see the front row seats. You see this whole nice row. We got a nice little walkway. The front row, there are 67 seats and they're honorary seats. And the next two rows next are also considered to be special honor seats. Frequently priests and priests Priestesses. Uh, here's a view of something with some of the se second and third level. And then you have the steps. Now the steps here were not so steep. Uh, even when I got to the top, turning around to come back down, it really wasn't too bad. But you go to Ephesus and you're going up into a 50,000 seat amphitheater. Uh, it looks like if you trip, you're going to roll all the way down. And then this is a view about halfway up. You see the area where the action would take place. And remember, they gladiated here at some point. Now the Romans will put a big stage back here for props. So there'll be a lot of other stuff going on here. But the Greeks normally just did it with minimal props. And then back behind the uh, the theater area is, is where the stage support was located. And some of that survives. You see the, uh, the one figure here. Let me give you a little closer view of it. Atlas with the weight of the stone on his shoulders. Well, I climbed all the way up to the top. And this is the view back down. And as you can see, any view you have from the Acropolis is really great. And then this is what it looked like when it was completed under the Roman era, the time of Hadrian. You can see the massive staging area. So that is the Temple of Dionysius, and that was just the first start. So here we are heading up a little higher here. Well, after climbing for a little bit, we come to the Asclepium. This is where people would come to be healed. And fortunately for us, there was a, a watering area. And so we were able to fill up our one little container of water to get us up to the next level. And here is uh, my, my daughter, Laura, and Sherry, and myself, looking a little tired and sweaty at this particular point. And we go by a couple of other parts of temples, which have been recently 
restored. Now we're coming up to the theater of Herodias Atticus. And that's built in 161 AD uh, by a local businessman to honor his wife. And believe it or not, it only seats 5,000 people. But remember what I said about how steep it is. So here is the Dionysian one. And we've come across the side of the, up, up here. And now we're at the top of where Atticus Theater. And here's a view from one corner of it. And you, again, you see the stage. Now, I would tell you, if you're going in June, June is the month of music festivals throughout Greece. And this and other sites are used. When we were back another time, uh, they were practicing for concerts. And so here's a view. We got to the top. And again, you see the steepness of this. So you had a cram X number of people in the space, so you just went a little more vertical. Uh, here's another shot looking down. And yeah, again, you could really hurt yourself if you made a mistake here. And then this is looking over onto the edge. And I actually have a DVD of Yanni playing a concert here. But here's an example of what you can find. Uh, they have a classical group down there and the stadium is full of people. You talk about getting your money's worth out of uh, investment in ancient times. And then after we leave there, it's now it's time to climb up to where the entrance is. So here's some of the places that we walked by to get a little higher. And you can see the steepness is increasing pretty dramatically. And along the way, we see a little bit of the architectural pieces. Here's a section where you can see two blocks of stone being held together by an iron pinion. And then we reach a little checkpoint here. You can buy water here, which we did. But that was basically put in to make sure the people came up from the bottom had a ticket because sometimes people jump the fence or do something. So it's kind of a security thing. Then we continue going up. Now here is part of the, the wall. And you notice the little dimples on the stones. You know, these stones, they had that on all four sides. And you attached your ropes and to the cranes. And they had cranes that lifted these up in the place. And where they were necessary to remove, they would just have somebody come in and knock those off and smooth them out. But it's not uncommon to see these all over the place in temples all over Greece. So we finally are reaching the prophylae, the entrance area. And then we will come up. And here is the beginning of the last climb to get to the top of the Acropolis. All right, let's show you what the easy one looks like. So we come up the same direction, except we do not go in on that corner. We just continue on up this row where there's all sorts of eateries and places to get water and anything else you want. We come up to this point right here. Then we go to the right and then take another right. And there's the ticket office. And bingo, you're there. So here we are walking by the original area where we came in. That's the ticket office. This walk that Sherry and I are taking was done five years later. And you can see that the cave area has now been restored. The entrance of it. You can't, you can't go in there, but you can at least see it. And then we walk up a little higher. And we're just nice and relaxed. And by golly, there's the Parthenon right there. So then we turn. Here's the little turn. So we go up. And you see it's, it is inclined but it's very very easy and i would also say make sure you have good walking shoes that goes without saying when you travel so here we're getting into the point where the ticket office is and you see the entrance the propylae up ahead so we go pay, take care of our ticket walk by now it's just a straight shot we're going to go straight up a little bit off to the right and then come up the side almost the same direction that we did from the other way so here we are walking up another inclined road and now we're at the top of Atticus's theater and we turn and begin our walk up to the entrance. Now uh, you see at this point we still have a ways of climbing to go. So we go through this entry area which would have been the first gate at the Acropolis. You come in then you kind of do a zigzag until you end up right in the front. Now this is what's known as the prophylae and you can see this was just so much easier. Now, granted, we didn't see the, the Theater of Dionysus in the other places, but we will on the way back down. 
So here we are going up the main steps, the profili, into the entrance to the Acropolis. And here is an artist's rendition of what it would have looked like in ancient times. And you can see the white area is restored sections, and then the other brownish color is what's there to begin with. And then just before we enter, I turned around to get a picture back down the hill. So here's where we, we entered in. Here's a shot showing the area where the Athenian citizens would come up and meet once a month, the Great Assembly. And then here's a view back down to the Agora, the main marketplace of Athens. And so remember, when they had the major feasts up here at the top of the Acropolis, they would start down here and process up the hill, the Panhellenic Road. And you've had people as Alexander the Great, Cleopatra, Mark Anthony, Augustus, of course Hadrian was here, and lots of other personages have walked and been up on this spot. So here we are getting ready to go right through to the central opening. Here's a little view of the Parthenon, which seemingly is always under construction. And then here is a view back looking at the entrance area. And I'm sure there were places in here where people sold possible sacrifices and a variety of other things as well. Now here is a artist rendition of the whole area. So we've come up through here. We've just entered this section. And we're going to go down and see what's left of the Temple of Nike. And then we'll eventually go over here to the Erytheum. And these buildings in red are foundations are here. They have not been restored. And of course, there's the Parthenon. And looking at a diagram standpoint, we've come right up through here. We're going to look over in this corner and then head over to the Erytheum. You see the foundation for the original temple and then the new temple. And I would give you another little tip. Walking up through the central area straight up is marble. You need to have shoes that will get good grip because we've seen people fall pretty hard on this with the wrong shoes. Now I noticed that the last time we were up here, the archaeologist had put in a row of cut stones along this path with lines in it. In other words, it's like a rumble strip. And you'll find those in a lot of ancient cities. Ephesus has them as well. So that when it was raining, you could go over to that side and get traction. Otherwise, wet marble, everybody's just going to slip and slide. So here we are at the Temple of Nike. At one time, this would have been, there have been towers constructed here during the Middle Ages. It was uh, built in the mid-5th century BCE, and then it was replaced with towers in the Middle Ages, and then we've had reconstruction work with the material that was still in the area. The temple is basically eight and a quarter meters by five and a half meters. And so this is one section of it. Here's the back side of it. And then you see the small little temple behind this other building, which is a, a, really the little tiny temple of Nike. Athena. Here is Sherry. There's the Erythectium behind her. I would note that the dress that Sherry is wearing has become a standard issue for all of our tours. We still, She still wears that and I have a purple golf shirt that I wore on our first trip and I always take it and there's always one picture that we take with the two of us in it. Now of course this is the oldest building on the site. This was originally one of the palaces of the Mycenaean time period kings and then after it was destroyed it was still the burial site of the kings of Athens. The new building that you see here was reconstructed in stages after the Persian War destruction. Uh, there was a section of it built in 421 to 415 BCE and then from 410 to 406 BCE. And of course you see the caryatid porch. Now it looks funny because it's built on four levels. So it has four fronts, four different roofs, four different colonnades. In this building, they house different Olympian god cults, but particularly the cult of Poseidon as well as the cult of Athena, because this will celebrate the battle between the two gods for who will be worshipped by Athens. So there's a trident-like object there for Poseidon and an olive tree for her, and there's a sacred spring nearby as well. And it also commemorates the early kings and the various heroes, such as Cecrops and Erechtheus and others. There's looking up at the Caryatid porch. We'll get to talk about that a little bit later. Here we are on the side. You can see the different levels. Now, as of right now, you can't go into the building. This is what it would have looked like in ancient times. So you would have lined up to have gone into the central area. So here is that view of that bottom series of temples. And you can see the giant columns and look right straight through into the sacred center. 
Now, the reason the artist showed those people lined up where they were going into the temple was because inside the temple, which is right straight ahead in this picture, what you found was what is known as the Zonon. This is a wooden effigy of Athena. And every four years, that statue was robed in a brand new poplos. So they put they had this huge festival, the Pan Athenia Festival, where they would put this new gown on the statue. And people came from all over the Greek world for this. And so this was the spectacular item that you came to see. And then look up to the ceiling. So then we go down the whole length of the back of the building. And we're going to have to go up a level. And they have a nice set of stairs, which they would have had in ancient times. So here it is looking back the other direction. There is quite a change in elevation. So now we're on the back side of it, the opposite side. Again, you see the columns and the huge groups. Now, one of the things about tour groups, this is always going to have lots of people up here on the Acropolis. And frequently they're in groups. Simply wait a few minutes, they'll talk a few minutes, they'll take some pictures, and then they'll be out of your way. It's probably really heavy early in the morning because the cruise ships will have their tours done as early as they possibly can, and then the school groups frequently come up in the afternoon. But not this, this area can hold thousands and thousands of people. You just simply have to wait a little bit. And here we are looking down the last side of the temple towards the Caryatid porch. And so here is our famous caryatid porch. The tops of the heads of these are actually uh, like baskets to help diffuse the weight on the statue. Now these are replicas that have been installed. At one point they had to have steel rods to hold the roof up and while well, they were putting in replacements. But the originals are in the Museum of the Acropolis, with the exception of one, which happens to be in the British Museum. And these are 2.2 meters high. Now, you don't have to go to Athens to see the Caryatid porch, because here's a picture of the porch, same thing, Caryatid porch, same size. This is at the Science Museum in Chicago. They built this off to, to one side. So you can go up there and see it. It's kind of like, you want to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa but not go to Italy? Go to Niles, Illinois. They have a half-size replica of it, and it, it, it even leans half-size. And then from the side of the Erythectium, you can get a nice view of Athens from up here. So this is looking down towards the various agoras. Of course, there's a Roman agora as well. And then this is looking off to one of the hills where there's a monastery up on top. And in a later show, we'll go up there to get a nice view. But you notice from the 1860s, when there was hardly anybody here, they're building all the way up the sides of these hills. So it's a really beautiful view from up here at the uh, Erythectium. And I would tell you that uh, you can't really go wrong on what time of the day to come up and visit. I think late at middle afternoon to the late afternoon is really good because the pictures you get coming up the steps and heading toward the buildings is quite nice. Now in the morning, the sun's the opposite direction. So it's not quite as crisp. You have to get off to an angle, but then you get a backside difference. So you, different time periods, you get different pictures. Well, we finally get to the main event, the Parthenon. But of course, we have some pictures we need to get in here. Here's a picture of my daughter, Laura, and her husband, Matt, who were on our trip. And of course, then they took a picture of Sherry and I in front of the Parthenon. And our little local newspaper had a deal that if you used the newspaper in a picture and sent it to them, then they would publish it. And we never did that. And then here is a view of the Parthenon when we were there in 2012. Let's talk a little bit about it before we move on. This was originally built 447 BCE to 437 BCE, and it was finished uh, with the decoration in 433 to 432. And of course, this is constructed after the destruction of Athens and the Second Persian War. Parthenon is 65.5 meters long. 30.8 meters wide. It would have had 9,000 marble roof tiles. And it also had a building that had 16,500 architectural members. Uh, eight column Doric style in the front and the back, and then 17 on each of the long sides. Now then Sherry and I went back, I think it's three or, three or four years later. So this would either be 2015 or 2016. And here is the Parthenon again. You see they've done a lot of work on the left-hand side of the pediment up here. Done a lot of work along in the front and on the other sides. So there is some progress 
But you also have to understand that the Greek economy crashed 2012 and really was just beginning to come back in 2019 when COVID hit. So the fact that there's even any change is just incredible. The nice thing about the marble that they used to make it originally, the quarry is still in existence. So they can still get the original stone. This is an artist's rendition of what the whole building would have looked like cut away. It was in pretty good shape until the 1600s when the Ottomans stored gunpowder in the center of it and a Venetian cannonball hit it and blew the roof off it, blew the pediment off of it, blew all sorts of things. Then it had to be pieced back together again. But up until that time, it was in pretty good condition. For decorations, it had a pediment in the front, which was the birth of Athena, and the pediment in the back, is the quarrel between Athena and Poseidon. And of course, they have all sorts of gods and everything else. It had 92 minotopes, which are statues. You had 32 on each of the long sides and 14 on each of the short sides. What's, what survives of them are in the Acropolis Museum. The downside of the Acropolis Museum is they don't allow you to take pictures inside of it. And then this building has 160 meters of friezes and other sculptures. Most of those are in the British Museum. They were removed by Lord Elgin in 18 in 1801 to 1803. And I've seen them. I didn't. And there's always been a big controversy over how they should come back. And of course, they were all sorts of different mythological themes. Now we're walking down the side, so here's the long side, which they've gotten in really, really good shape. And you can see where the original blocks are and where the new additions were added. And then here we are getting down to the end. So backing away, this is a shot actually from the Aerothectium, looking over. And now we're at the back, so we have to have a picture from here. And so there's Sherry with the original dress from the first trip. And then we have the nice, there's a picture of me, but Sherry's a lot prettier. And so here is the back side, and you can see how well it is. And now we're going to walk around the other section, see a lot of the loose stone that's been put in position to be moved into its correct location. And now we're down towards the front. And here's a couple of the column pieces. They weren't solid columns, they were barrel columns. So you would have had a cut in the middle, which would have been then fitted and then another one put over the top of it. And you see here you have the ones with the spalds on the side, so they could be lifted in the position and then cut. And then here's a base column that was there. And then we get back around to the front, and you can see all of the construction going on up here. And this was when we were there in uh, the second time. And here's what it looked like when we were there the first time. And then here's a picture of both Sherry and I at the back of the temple. It is the one thing good about having lots of tourists up here. There's plenty of people to take your picture. Well, I'm going to talk about what was in this Parthenon when I get to another section. Okay, it's a little easier to do that way because the, you came up to see the statue of Athena, which was incredible. Now, after doing the Parthenon, we went to the point at the opposite end, which is a great shot that you can take of the flag because it's always breezy up here. And then we took pictures of the rest of, of Athens. So here is a picture from up on the top looking towards the Botanical Garden. And there's a little closer shot looking at the Botanical Garden. And you can see the Temple of Zeus down here that was built by Hadrian. And then we shot to the complete south. And so this is the view of Athens all the way down to Piraeus. And you can see the Saronic Gulf up here. Before we start walking down, here's a view of the Dionysian Theater from up above. Now let's talk about the Statue of Athena. Well, we're going to go to another location. You know, I mentioned replica sites. Well, if you want to see the Parthenon, and I mean an exact replica of the Parthenon, you need to go to Nashville, Tennessee. When Nashville, Tennessee had their centennial in the 1800s, the theme was Wonders of the Ancient World. And in Centennial Park, Parthenon was so popular that the local businessmen decided to take up a collection and build a real one out of Tennessee granite, which at night when you put photo floods on it, it makes it look like it's white Panhellenic marble. Well, you can go in the front door. Here's the, what the doors would have looked like. Those would have been opened in ancient times at sunrise and closed at sunset. And if you were a devotee coming in, you would have come in and right in this area, you would have had the statue of Athena. Well, when we first went to Nashville, they didn't have a replica, but they took up a collection and built a replica statue. So here is the replica statue, unadorned. So this is Nike in her warrior outfit with her little Nike Athena in her hand. And so it's the same size. So it's 12 meters and three quarters in height. It was 
originally, the original one was carved by Phidias. Now, it had a wooden core, and then its its limbs, the arms, and anything that was skin, was then ivory. And then they covered this. Her clothes were sheets of gold. Now, according to the ancient accounts, they used around 1,150 kilos, which would be 2,550 pounds of gold to cover this. And here's an idea of what it would have looked like completed. They actually painted it. It's not gold, but it's gold paint. You can imagine people coming from all over the Hellenic world to see that. Just for the sake of breaking it down, 2,550 pounds of gold is 40,800 troy ounces. In 2023, that's $1,999 an ounce. So in today's money, $81,559,200. And you see the replica shield and a shot of the little replica Nike. And then here's a view of the Parthenon in, Na in Nashville at night with the float of floods on it. Well, it's time to finally walk back down and have some lunch. So here's Matt and Laura walking in front of us as we're going back down from the Acropolis. The lady coming up has high heels on. It was just amazing to see that take place. And then we walk by the, this is when Sherry and I were there the second time. Here's the much restored Asclepius temple. And then we went a little further down. As, well, we got as close as we could, but we went further down to see the sacred cave that's being excavated. Here's a closer view of it where they have the entrance. And then a, a shot of the Dionysian theater from the top. And then we're back down at the bottom, shooting back up to the top of the Acropolis. And then here we are exiting now, when we were there the first time, you walked down the little road and there's a whole series of restaurants. And we initially ate right here on this little edge restaurant. But it was really nice. We had a good time. We thought we would uh, come back the next night to have dinner because I had a I had a plot hatching in my head, and that plot was very simple. I was planning on proposing to Sherry at the base of the pyramids in Egypt on our vacation. But she was so touched by the Acropolis and the Parthenon that I thought, you know what, why don't we just do it here? So the next night, I put a jacket on. Everybody else was just regularly. I had warned Laura to bring her camera and make sure she was ready. And so we sat a little deeper into that restaurant. And at the time of dessert, I proposed to Sherry. So here's the picture of me proposing. And she's looking at the little ring. It was just a little cheap ring. We would take care of that later. And then she said yes, as you can see here. And then we went back, as I said before, on several occasions. When we went back the next time, we went back to that restaurant. And here is a picture of Sherry and I at that restaurant years later. And that is Chris, who was one of the servers at the time that we, when I, at the time I proposed. And he remembered us. We go back to that restaurant every time we are in Athens. The last time we were there, unfortunately, was during New Year's as we're getting ready to go to Egypt. And that restaurant was closed down for the winter. So we didn't see him the last time we were in Athens. But when we were in Athens the last time, we were there for a New Year's Eve celebration. So this is what we saw from the roof of the Amalia Hotel. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packet, and please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows, and I've done CDs, which, of course, can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com, and see what's there. So thank you very much again.